So I'm Chad Hansen. Uh, I'm the director of the John Muir Project of Earth Island Institute, which is a nonprofit forest conservation group. I also have a PhD in ecology from the University of California at Davis, and my research focus is forest and fire ecology. So I study areas that have burned in the Sierra Nevada forests, and we are right now in the Star Fire, which burned in 2001, and we're in the Duncan Canyon Inventory Roadless Area, looking at an area that burned at high severity. Now this is a patch that where most of the, where all the trees, in fact, here were killed in a, in a fairly large area. Uh, this is not typical of the majority of the area that burned, or the majority of the areas that burn in most fires. They mostly burn at low and moderate severity, uh, like all this area over here that you can see farther uh, that way, uh, north and west. But there are patches, and sometimes large patches like this one, where most or all the trees are killed. And it's important to look at this because, contrary to what most people assume, this area is not damaged or destroyed ecologically. In fact, this is one of the most biodiverse and ecologically important forest habitat types in the Sierra Nevada. Areas like this, where most or all the trees are killed, actually support peak levels of wildlife diversity and higher plant diversity. In fact, the two highest levels of biodiversity in any forest types are uh, mature old growth forest and areas of mature forest that have burned at high severity, like this one. One of the key management indicator species for this type of habitat is a black-backed woodpecker. And we saw one of those earlier. They depend entirely on areas like this where most or all the trees are killed and you have a lot of large snags. And the reason for that is they eat a lot of uh, bark beetle and wood-boring beetle larvae. One bird eats 13,500 beetle larvae every single year. So you need a lot of standing dead trees for that. And they excavate nest cavities in the dead trees. You look around and you see some patches of shrubs. This is uh, Ceanothus. And uh, what these shrubs do is actually replace nitrogen in the soil. Uh, when fire burns, especially when it burns at higher severity like this, a lot of this, the nitrogen in the soil is turned into its gaseous form and it goes in, into the air. These shrubs take it from the atmosphere and they put it back in the soil. And what that does is it increases the productivity of the area. And it allows the conifers that are naturally coming in to, to grow and to flourish. And if you look around, what you see is all around us here, in this area where every tree is killed, you see lots of natural um, regrowth of conifer saplings, uh, conifer seedlings. Uh, you've got over here incense cedar, sugar pine, uh, white fir, you know, the whole mix of conifer species in this mixed conifer forest is uh, coming back very vigorously. And uh, that is really contrary to uh, the assumptions that the Forest Service and foresters have made over the past several decades. They've assumed that you won't get natural conifer regrowth and what you need to do is cut down all the trees, kill off all the shrubs, and plant a conifer plantation. Ecologically, that's the worst thing in the world you could possibly do. So if, uh, if it's possible to pan and look at some of this, um, you can see the regrowth that's uh, going on all around us. For an example of what not to do after a fire in terms of ecological impacts, that's a perfect example right there. Uh, this is also part of the Star Fire. That slope over there, most of it was logged after the fire, what the Forest Service and the timber industry call post-fire salvage logging. Salvage mean they're salvaging the economic value of the trees that were killed uh, by the fire. Of course, a lot of the live old growth trees are cut too. Um, so what you see is basically a barren landscape. They've removed all the ecologically important standing dead trees that are so important to so many wildlife species, cavity nesters. They removed all the shrubs that are so important to so many bird species and, uh, and small mammals. And typically what the Forest Service and the timber industry will do in an area like this is then they will later come in with huge amounts of toxic herbicides and they will kill all of the, uh, the shrub vegetation that comes in naturally years later. And they will do that sometimes more than once, uh, which fouls up and pollutes the streams, uh, can very seriously harm aquatic species and a lot of uh, terrestrial species too.